All right, let's continue our journey of learning JavaScript. We've got uh, the next example will be a complete the phrase program. Um, this one has some start code. I'll, uh, I'll, I should put a link to the start code in the YouTube description, in the video description. And this is the start code here. The idea is um, each button here contains the beginning of a common phrase. Um, you're supposed to see if you can complete the phrase and you can click the button to reveal the solution down below. Right, so a picture is worth, you would click it and the solution would show up. However, it doesn't do anything right now because we haven't added the JavaScript yet. And JavaScript is what makes our web page alive. So let's add some JavaScript to this. All right, so I've got the code open already. Um, you can see I've got just the HTML and CSS file. Um, complete the phrase, there's the instructions. Here's my buttons that have IDs on each of them because I'll have to uniquely select each button, right, to be able to add an event listener to it. And then my solution area is, uh, it also has an ID so that I can select it to change its content with JavaScript. Okay, and then styles, just some basic styles to make it look a little nicer. All right, so if we remember, um, our goal is, if I add a comment here, I'm going to load some JavaScript. And we do that using a script tag. Okay, and remember we can do stuff like alert, um, complete the, what was it again? Complete the phrase is the name of this program, right? And now when I run my program, it ran that alert method and away we go. Okay. Um, one of the things we want to focus on here is external JavaScript. Um, and the idea here is I don't, just like we have an external style sheet, I actually don't want to put my JavaScript inside of this HTML document. I'd rather have a JavaScript document and then I'm going to link to it and launch it from my HTML. So the way that we do that is we just make a new file. I'm going to call it main.js. So of course, .js for JavaScript, all right? And what I then can then do is I can take my JavaScript command, I can cut it, control X, and put it inside of main.js, and I'll save that. And now, of course, if I save this, my script tag is empty. So when I refresh this page, it doesn't have any JavaScript. But what I can do is, the script tag, very similar to like the image tag, is I can give it a source. And my source will be that main.js file. And basically by giving the script tag uh, in the start tag a source, it basically loads this file inside of the script element as if I had just typed the commands inside of there. Okay, so this is nice because it allows me to keep, see now it, it works, right? It loaded that file, main.js, and ran the code. This is nice because it keeps things organized. My HTML is just for the content, right? And I link to my style sheet. I load my JavaScript and I keep my JavaScript, which is the, the functionality of my the interactivity of my page separate and the style of my page separate. Okay. Now, one of the things that's really annoying here and the next goal of this lesson is functions and events. Let's just add a quick note here though. Um, for external JavaScript, the idea is we want to do our script tag and we go source equals slash script. And inside of here, we can link to a file, main.js. Just want to add a little note just so that we can remember that. All right, functions and events now. Um, basically, I, I don't want to have my code execute right away, right? It's kind of annoying. I hit refresh here and boom, this alert happens right away. Um, what I'd like to do is be able to say, oh, whenever I click this button, I'd like to trigger that code. So to do that, the first thing we need to do is we need to put our code inside of a function. All right. So a function is basically just a block of code, a named block of code. We define it by using the word function, and then we specify a name. So I'm just going to call this, you know, my function for now because I don't know what it's actually going to do. Um, and then we do an open and close parenthesis and an open and close brace. We'll talk more about these parentheses later. For now, just know that we need them. And then these braces are important because that shows where the function starts and where it ends. Okay, it's a block of code that we're, we're saying. And then we're going to take this command and I'm going to put it 
inside of this block of code. So now, if I save this, this alert command doesn't happen anymore. Okay, it's inside of that function, and functions don't execute the code inside of them until they're told to do their job. All right, now how are we going to tell this function to do its job? We're going to add an event listener. All right, and that event listener is going to say, hey, when this event happens, do what's inside of this function. Okay, now the way that we add an event listener, I want to add an event listener to this button here called hello with the ID hello. So we're going to use this command we learned in the last lesson, document.getElementById, and inside of these parentheses, I give it the ID, which is hello. So JavaScript will search the document for the element with the ID hello. And then I'm going to go dot. So on that element, I'm going to add an event listener. So it pops up there. And this event listener method takes two arguments. The first one is the event I want to listen for. So we're just going to do click, because I want to click the button. And then I do a comma to separate um, what the, uh, the event we're listening for. And then the next thing we want to pass into this add event listener method is what do I do when I click this? And for that, we just give it the name of the function, my function, and we put that in here. So what this is saying is it's saying, okay, document, I'm going to search the document for the element with this ID, and I'm going to add an event listener to this element that when I click it, it'll run my function. It's a long line of code, but hopefully it makes sense. Let's save that. And fingers crossed. If I click anywhere on the page, nothing happens. But if I click this button, yay, it says complete the phrase. Awesome. So we've now added an event listener to this button that triggers the code inside of my function. All right. So let's fix this um, because what I want to have happen, I don't want to alert to complete the phrase. I want to change the text inside of here to show the solution. All right. So, and, and also let's change the name of this so it's more descriptive, right? We want to write code that's easy to read. So I'm going to call this hello solution. And then I need to change that here as well. Hello solution. Cool. And instead of alerting, what I want to do is I want to change the content of this div right here, right? Right now it's just these dashes to show that I haven't done anything yet. But I want to change the inner HTML, the content of this div with the ID solution um, to say what to complete the phrase. And I'm going with our theme of our last example, hello, and the phrase should say world, right? Hello world. So let's do that. I'm going to go this document.getElementById again, and I'm going to select the element with the ID solution, and then I'm going to access the inner HTML of that element and assign it to be dot 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 world. Cool. So again, this just searches JavaScript will search the HTML document, find the element with the ID solution, and then set its inner HTML property to be this string. Okay, save that and hopefully this works. Hello world. Awesome. Okay. So now that we've got this working, right? JavaScript allows me to make my web page alive. I got to get the other buttons working as well. Okay. So a picture is worth a thousand words. So I need to go, and I should add some comments here. Um, in JavaScript, comments are slash slash. And I should give this a title, complete the phrase demo. And then I'm going to do here add event listeners. So I'm going to group my event listeners here. And then here I'm going to make a comment and see these are my event functions, right? The functions that I'll execute when an event happens. So I'm going to add another event listener, document.getElementById. This time I forget the ID. It's pitcher. Okay. So picture.addEventListener. Again, we're going to listen for the click event. And I'm going to go picture solution. And remember, this is supposed to be when I when I click this button, I'm supposed to call a function called picture solution. 
So I need a function called function picture solution. Oops. Solution, open and close parentheses, open and close braces. Okay. And this is going to do the exact same thing as this one, except instead of world, it's going to say a picture is worth what does it say a picture is worth and then i need to complete it a thousand words cool hopefully that works now a picture is worth a thousand words hello world and i can switch these javascript updates my web page sweet okay i've got uh well hold on i think i'm going to leave it there um as an activity for you guys, uh, if you could finish off the last one, right? A watch pot never boils, right? So you can um, take this code and add this. And if you wanted to add some other buttons with phrases, you could do that as well. Okay. Um, if we go to our lesson here, so functions and events, um, the first thing we learned is we have to define a function, right? And we do that by going function you know, name of the function, open and close braces. And then we added, did our um, document.get element by ID dot add event listener. And here we go, click and then name of function. Cool. Uh, the last thing I want to do in this video is our friend, the console. Um, when you're running your web page, running your program in your web page, if you hit F12, it should open up the console here. Um, this console is a place where we can actually run JavaScript. I can actually go alert hello world right in here, right? I can. This is kind of a place where I can test JavaScript. JavaScript can do math, two plus three is five. Um, I can actually do things like this right in here. Document.get element by ID. I'm gonna select the element with the ID solution. And I'm going to change its style color to be red. We'll talk more about this stuff later, but <laughs> see, it found it and got that. Now, of course, if I refresh the page, that style doesn't change. But anyway, the point of this console, we usually don't, it's kind of a playground for JavaScript. The important thing about the console is if we were to make a mistake in our code, right? So let's say, for example, I typed something wrong. I did hello solution, so solution. And when I save this, um, see, already, wow, right? If I refresh this, it says hello solution is not defined, main.js line four. So it gives me errors. So I look at line four of main.js and line four has this, oh, I'm supposed to call a function hello solution. But JavaScript knows that there is no function called hello solution because I named this wrong. If I fix that, it should have no errors and it should work. Cool. Um, yeah, other things too, right? If I did document, like just little typo errors or something like that. Um, refresh, uncaught reference error, document is not defined. Okay, so if your program's not working, open up this console and you'll be able to hopefully see some error messages and that'll give you an indication of how to fix your program okay that's why the console is our friend i'll add a little comment here um, shows er our error messages appear in the console okay that's it for now external javascript right write our code in a separate file functions and events so that we can run our code when an event happens and the console gives us error messages. Cool. Hope that makes sense. Hope you're having fun. Take care and see you in the next video.